Knee pain is the most common injury runners face. In this video, we're gonna discuss the most common causes of knee pain, my favorite exercise progressions for strengthening our knees, and then three practical tips for how to navigate returning to running. When someone is getting some knee pain while running, there's a few different causes. Determining where that pain is coming from helps guide how we get back to 100%. Before we discuss these specific conditions, we want to remember that there are two joints inside our knee. We have our patella femoral joint, where our kneecap and our femur go together, and we have our tibio femoral joint. The tibio femoral joint is where the two big bones in our legs come together. That's where our ligaments, our meniscus, our articular cartilage are contained. These are the most common locations of pain that I see in the clinic. Patella femoral pain syndrome means pain that's coming from our kneecap, specifically the back of our kneecap with the front portion of our femur or thigh bone. Patella tendinopathy is where the tendon that's located at the bottom of our kneecap gets a little irritated. Pain along our medial joint line generally means that there's a problem coming from inside our knee. Pain along the outside our knee, specifically along Gertie's tubercle, is often referred to as IT band pain. Finally, Oshkut slaughters, which is pain from the small bump on the front of our shin bone. It's important for us to remember that all of these conditions tend to feel better with some level of activity. Complete rest is normally not the prescription to get you back to 100%. We can take a pretty general approach to progressing back to running, regardless of where that pain is coming from. We often categorize exercises based off of where the movement is coming from. In our lower body, we look at things like lunges and squats as knee dominant exercises, meaning that a lot of the motion is coming from our knee joints. As much as these can be limiting and painful in the beginning, these can be crucial components of their rehab back to training. They load the tissues around our knee that are really important for running. Here's a still shot of the mid stance phase of running. It kind of looks like a little mini squat. One of my priorities when working with these conditions is to progress our exercises back to exercises that look like this position. In the initial stages, we often want to work on exercises where our knee has to work, but we actually don't progress our shin forward very much. This is a way for us to condition those tissues without putting excess strain on that specific area. In the long term, we know our knee needs to be able to get into this position, so we wanna progress our exercises back to positions that look like this. Here's a typical progression I'll often use with my patients. We'll initially start with a wall sit. Eventually, we will progress to a step up. We'll go through a goblet squat, and finally, a split squat. And as we look at all these exercises, we see that they are a gradual progression of allowing that shin to come forward. They get more stressful and hopefully do a better job of reflecting the specific demands of running. That's an important way for us to see if we're making progress. I've got three simple tips as we return to running. It's not uncommon for people to have a little bit of knee pain as they get back to the running process, but there's a few things we can do to make this a little bit more seamless. The first thing is to increase your step rate. Step rate or cadence manipulation is a common technique used for a lot of different running injuries. We see that if we increase our step rate by five to 10%, we can get a significant reduction in knee loading. That's a good thing when we're coming back from knee pain. The second thing we can do is operate a lot of our runs at a slight incline. Whether that's going through your neighborhood or plugging in a one to two percent grade on your treadmill, if we're running at a little bit of an incline, it tends to feel a little bit better on our knees. And the final thing we can do is vary our speed. When we run at a slower pace, we see that the cumulative load on our knee increases. Taking your easy pace faster by 10 or 15 seconds can be a helpful thing as we return back to 100%. Every rehab is a little different, but hopefully these principles will help us assess and progress our runners back to 100%. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.